Hi folks, welcome to or welcome back to Exposed and if I'm welcoming you back and you like it here I'd love it if you subbed and stayed. Got a comment earlier and they said you've got no style. I was cut to the quick. I wrote back, I said how can you tell? You've only ever seen me in my pyjamas. Honestly, some people. Right, I'm doing this Lisa video without a bingo card because it's one of them talky ones. Quiet luxury isn't for me, and that's okay. The quiet luxury trend, let's discuss. Shall we jump in? Hey guys, it's Lisa, and today we're gonna talk about quiet luxury, which is a new trend that I have seen for quite a while now here on YouTube. And to be honest with you, I've almost avoided it a little bit because I just know that that's not something that I'm really just interested in in any way as far as style. It's just not something I'm curious about because I pretty much know what they're talking about, the whole no logos, more minimalism, things like that. But then I started seeing some people that I really like and admire doing videos on it. And I on purpose didn't watch those because if I think that someone I like might say something to hurt my feelings, even inadvertently, like they don't, they aren't meaning it towards me. I try to avoid that because. Lisa, you in one sentence there have just confirmed what I've been saying since I've started reacting to your videos. You live in a bubble. You can't spend your entire life in a bubble in case someone might say something you don't like. You need to grow a spine and learn to let it roll off. How can somebody else saying they don't like wearing logos upset you? It might hurt my feelings. Yeah. I remember you talking about a lady in an elevator once. I bet that hurt her feelings, but you didn't give a flying fuck about that, did you? No, but no one's allowed to hurt Lisa's feelings. God forbid we might say something that would upset you. Like I always say, I try to protect my peace. And if I can avoid having that feeling, I do. So that is a lot of the reason, but I've had many people ask me what I thought about the quiet luxury trend. And it's- It's not a trend. It's never been a trend. No more than wearing logos has been a trend. Either you do it or you don't. I don't buy things. Oh, I got this from another video. I want to put that up and discuss because her boobs look very strange to me in that. Um, I don't buy... What are we talking about? I don't buy things with logos because I don't see what I... Not that I got the money for a fucking Birkin bag or whatever the hell, but I don't see why I should pay over the top to advertise somebody else's line. They should be paying me to be going around with their logo. And what is the difference between a t-shirt, a white t-shirt, a nicely made white t-shirt, or a white t-shirt with Adidas on? The people that are wearing the t-shirt with Adidas on, along with you, just want people to see the logos and think, oh, she must have money. And you don't want to hear anybody saying that because that might hurt your feelings. Probably because I'm a little out there and I'm not someone who dresses in quiet luxury most of the time. So I thought it would just be fun to talk about it, honestly. Oh, fun and honest. In the same sentence and you've just said you've avoided other videos because you didn't want them to upset you sorry one of the qvc models has obviously got a wig on and it just you know when you know somebody's got really short hair and then you see them with long hair and you're like what happened there 
happy. I'm not going to probably tell you anything that you don't already know. I just wanted no, to kind of open know. the discussion. And one day, my hope is to have live videos. The thing is, I would need someone to help me keep <laughs> trying. <laughs> How long have you been on YouTube and now you want to go live? But you'd need some help of the questions and comments so I need to work on that but a lot of times you know you'll think about things and the people around you in your life really don't want to talk about it and that's where you guys just are so valuable to me about the different things that we talk about so thank you for being here so let's start off I've got lots of notes that are but you don't talk to anyone do you you go down your comments you see the ones that kiss your ass and then you put thank you Lisa and a little heart I've never yet seen you have a conversation with anybody. Are really not significant, but just to keep me on track, what is quiet luxury? In my opinion, it is a trend of... It's not a trend. Quiet luxury is the antithesis of fast fashion, with a focus on thoughtful shopping and wearing true investment pieces. God, she'd never do that, would she? A juxtaposition to the logo mania that was trending over the past few years it's more minimalist approach a uh, more minimalist approach to dressing yes lisa you are fast fashion non-thoughtful and you never buy anything as an investment piece you just buy all this shit from zara and then next year you buy it all again of wearing and even speaking and carrying yourself in a way that doesn't call attention to wealth but can signify it in other ways and then i also think it is an appreciation for really nice things like fabrics and just the way things fit the way things are sewn and i will say after sewing like i have there is just how many more times are you going to tell us that you used to sew? Sewing straight lines on a fucking sewing machine is not rocket science, Lisa. Such a big difference in fabrics. There really is. So I do realize that. And you guys know when I do videos, I'll tell you this is a really nice fabric. This is heavy. This hangs well. This moves well. This is lined. This is made out of so and so, so and so, because I do find that important. Now, it's not going to keep me from getting something that I like if I feel like I want it. And maybe it's not going to be as comfortable as a cashmere sweater, but it's just something I want to try, then I'll do that too. So that goes into what. I consider my style to be and I think that I'm very trendy I do and just like I told you in my Friday video where I brought this up I'm not ashamed to be trendy I, I have fun with it I think if you are a creative person and you are just naturally a lover of if you're a creative person no if you're a fucking show-off narcissist who wants all the attention on them fashion and shoes ever since i can remember i can remember the clothes i wore the shoes i've always been into that in how things make me feel so i have that connection with that so someone who maybe isn't as into clothing say your corporate woman who certainly wants to look nice maybe she's very successful she wants to appear successful she's very wealthy she's probably not even doing her own shopping she's probably not even going into the stores she's no, she probably looks online at the stores she knows, knows her size and buys stuff for herself. Or maybe she does pop into the store in the lunchtime. Just because people have got a career doesn't mean they can't shop. She's probably getting things sent to her house by a personal shopper who buys her all... She thinks that's how people live. There's a teeny, weeny, weeny little percentage of people that do that. Like the future Queen of England, Catherine. She probably does that. Because she can't go and change in Marks and Spencer's changing rooms anymore. Normal people buy their own clothes, Lisa. 
all of the nicest things. And she may even tell that shopper, I don't like labels. I don't like prints. I don't like loud colors. There she goes with that. So she's not someone like me that loves to shop, that loves to try new things and embraces every facet of my personality. Who's addicted to shopping? Who has to shop? We saw you when you had a no-buy month. You nearly went insane. And you spent the entire time returning things so you could get something else because you just had to shop. You've got an addiction. You've got an illness. But you will not listen to people because it's your way or the highway. My style personality. Some days I do like a good minimal all black outfit with very simple nude shoes and straight hair and a simple stud. There are days that I love that or it might even go for a week or two. I just go through phases so I really don't restrict myself to any one style. So I had a friend tell me that I was probably 75% trendy, 25% classic and I would pretty much agree with that. But this is the one one thing that if I had to have a message to give you as my friends, this is what I want it to be. Don't feel less than because you're trendy. Don't feel less than because you don't dress classic or you don't have quiet luxury style. That is simply a style, just like everything else. Well, it's very similar to minimalism. It's very similar to, let's see, the capsule. How about you don't feel bad for wearing logos and being trendy. How about you turn it around the other way, watch the, the videos and not sit crying in the corner because they said something mean. A wardrobe a lot of times will be very into nicer fabrics. And then there are some people that are not as much into that. That's the thing. It's even like when I did the how to look rich, I got so much, I won't say negative comments because I think anytime you do a video like that, you're pretty much asking for everyone's opinion. And that's part of this. That's part of being here on YouTube and you leaving comments. But I remember someone saying that they were friends with women that rode horses at the stables and these were all very wealthy women and they never wore this this and this they wore this this and this you know more equestrian type stuff well that's that's very normal that's very normal if that's what their hobbies are that's what their interests are then that's probably how they're going to spend their money and how they're going to be dressed so there is no one way to look classy. There is no one way to be stylish. It just depends on whoever is perceiving your style. It depends on their, I always think of it as kind of like glasses that we look through. These glasses are created by how we were raised, where we were raised, our different opinions that have been given to us by our surroundings, our parents. So however that person is viewing you is going to be one perception and then how you view yourself is going to be another perception. So there are sometimes you may feel like you are dressed in quiet luxury. Maybe you do have one of the simplest bags from Louis Vuitton, like a Speedy or... One of the simplest bags from Louis Vuitton. There's got LV all over it, advertising fucking Louis Vuitton. I love how this video has cut the top of her head off because that's where it's open and other people are throwing sentences in for her to say. Because there's nothing in there. What? A never full. To me, that's somewhat quiet luxury because... No, it isn't. It's Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton. A plain black bag with no logo on it that you bought from a top-end shop that's made with the highest grade leather and hand sewn or whatever that's quiet luxury 
It's not bright gold and it's very classic. I would say that. And that's, that's probably more what I like even more than quiet luxury is I do like classic things. My wedding ring, very classic. I just wanted a solitaire. There are a lot of things that I just like that are classic. And I somewhat consider the Gucci print the Fendi print and the Louis Vuitton print, I kind of consider those classic because they have been around so long and they've stood the test of time. I think another interesting thing about the quiet luxury trend, and I didn't really know about this until I started watching some of the videos, a lot of it is reference. Oh, hang on. You, you didn't watch any videos, but you didn't know this until you started watching the videos. So which is it? You can't even say the truth in this video you're lying and tripping over your lies but you don't lie do you lisa no you're a saint to the hbo series succession and john and i are watching it we've just started season two i think we're about one or two episodes into season two now i tried to watch this when it first came out because i love things like this i love the whole family dynamic i'm interested in wealthy people and how they live i love mafia movies i love that whole dynamic but I watched, I think, the first episode or maybe the first and second and just didn't get into it. Now, I will say it is one of those shows that you have to stick it out. Breaking Bad was like that for me. You have to watch, I would say, three to four episodes. And then when you get to know the characters a little bit more, because they call it dark humor. And See, I can't do that. I'm of the opinion. I'm in the second half of my life, which I don't think will be a half because there's no way I'm living till 100. And I don't have time to sit through shit that I just don't like. So I tried Breaking Bad. I watched 25 minutes or something and was like, nope. And then Peaky Blinders. I have tried so many times with Peaky Blinders and I just can't get past the first 20 minutes of it. It's like... Ugh. I've been told that's one you need to persevere with. And my son absolutely adores Breaking Bad. I think he's watched it nine million times now. But I just, it's like I, I put, I'll record stuff on the telly and then I'll start watching it and it's like, nope, nope. And then if I like it, I'll sit and watch the whole series in one sitting. And at first I was thinking, what is humorous about this? And I can see now because you will give a chuckle even if it's not funny because some of the stuff is just shocking. Their style on Succession, of course, this is a very, very, very wealthy family and it is very, very understated. I will say I have never once never once and you guys know i will flat google something in a heartbeat if i see something on tv that i want to see what it is or get i have never once thought about one piece of clothing or bag or anything that they have ever shown so that just shows you right there it's just not appealing to me then a lot of people are referencing gwyneth paltrow and i have always thought of gwyneth, gwyneth paltrow is very minimal she's never had big crazy hair or i've never really considered Gwyneth Paltrow a fashion icon. I don't know if you guys have ever heard me mention her. The only time I can... What is she wearing? Sorry, I've just been taken aback by... Is that supposed to be a dress? It's right up... You can see her hoo-ha. Hello, QVC. Handkerchief hem swim dress. Oh, can you wear that in the pool? Anyway, I've forgotten what I stopped this to say now. I got so thrown by her in that. Do you swim in it? I'm going to have to look it up afterwards. Gwyneth Paltrow. Do, do you only like people that are fashion icons? Why can you not look at Gwyneth Paltrow and think, oh, she looks good? I wouldn't wear it. Which is what most people say when they look at you. But Can ever think of... Hearing her name with fashion as it pertains to my style would be, someone told me one time that even Gwyneth Paltrow wears Spanx underneath her clothes just to make them hang better and look better, kind of like a slip would do. And that is the only time I can ever remember referencing 
Gwyneth Paltrow's style. I bet she's cut to the quick. Poor Gwyneth. You've never thought of her as a style icon and you've never mentioned her. Lucky you, Gwyneth. Not that I don't think she's beautiful and everything else, but when she was in that court case, I remember keeping up with that just a little bit because I remember she handled that very well, I thought. I believe she was well-spoken and I think at the end of the trial, she went over and whispered to him that she wishes him well. And I thought that was so classy. I just got chills. I love classy moves like that. I really do. I love good people, but I- You got chills. Damn. Sorry. Never once thought about what she was wearing. Well, evidently it was like the highest quality, most luxurious clothing, cashmere, all of these things you can find. It seems like I remember her wearing cardigans and things like that. So that is a little background on the quiet luxury. One thing that I think probably makes a big difference in the whole quiet luxury trend. It's not a trend. Do is where you live. Like where I live, it stands out. Where you live, people live in shorts and t-shirts and flip-flops. And you go around in wide leg balloon jeans, crop tops, high heel plastic shoes carrying a Stella McCartney bag. Out if I see a woman with a Birkin or a Chanel bag or even a Gucci bag. Now there are plenty of women that live here that have Louis Vuittons, that's very, very popular. Tory Burch, that's very popular. It's not that we don't have designer bags here, but like I've said, we don't have a Saks, we don't have a Nordstrom, we don't have a big mall. A lot of times I could carry a Birkin or one of my Chanel's. I think most people would recognize Chanel, but I know when I carry my Birkin, if someone compliments me on my bag, that is a, if you know, you know type moment. Whereas if I were to go to New York or even a bigger city, even probably in North Carolina, like Charlotte or Raleigh, more people would know. So I think that has a lot to do with it too. I was thinking if you wanted to go for that style, which I do think dressing quiet luxury is a style. I was trying to think, you know, there are certainly other places that you could shop that really have that quiet luxury look. And these are places that I do shop. I actually think Gap, you could get the quiet luxury look, especially. Well, you obviously didn't, did you? Now where you get like this dress is just so simple. Maybe you wouldn't wear the red. Maybe you would wear. You're missing the entire point of quiet luxury, aren't you? It's luxury goods without a logo. So a really expensive cashmere jumper. A really expensive pair of tweed trousers. A really expensive leather coat. Those type of things that don't come with Louis Vuitton or Fendi or whatever stuck on the side of it. Buying a classic conservative dress from Gap isn't quiet luxury. Am I missing the point or is it her? Anyone? Wear black or you would wear a camel. That's another thing. The colors have to do with it. The absence of prints, the absence of logos, the colors, the more earth tones. That is certainly quiet luxury. Those are all things that I like. And honestly, I always tell you, if you're gonna shop at less expensive places, like even yesterday, I posted my Walmart dress try-on video. That white dress from Walmart that is made by Free Assembly, the quality is amazing. That quality is up to par with, I would say, Banana Republic. You could wear that dress and a very classy, nice pair of sandals with a very, classy plain leather bag and look quiet luxury look very classy put a nice white sweater it's the way you carry yourself that also lends to the whole quiet luxury and then the way you speak all of these things it just kind of goes right into how to look classy how to look expensive how to look rich i will say 
No, it doesn't, because the people that you see and you class as wearing quiet luxury, what did she just say? Don't want to look rich. Their aim isn't to look rich. It's poor people and people like you that try to look rich by wearing labels. Oh, she must have money. She's got a Fendi pair of sandals on. I think you've missed the whole entire point of any of this, haven't you? If you see Catherine, going back to her, out and about, and she's in a nice blue dress or whatever and a blue coat, is she looking rich? Is she trying to look rich? No. That's quiet luxury. There's a story. Let's have a break. I caught a bit of a podcast thing the other day and I remember when it was done, it was Prince William went to uh, somewhere and he was on a podcast with Thingy Me Bob Crouch, you know, that eight foot tall footballer and a couple of other blokes. <laughs> and they were talking about what's the worst present you've ever bought your wife? And William was like, oh, I remember right at the beginning in the courtship days, I bought her a pair of binoculars. <laughs> and Kate was like, um, what are these for? And he's like, oh, they're really good. You can see really far. And she's like, and I need to see really far because... <laughs> And he went, yeah, I think that cemented it. That's why she married me. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, even even the future king of England got, gets it wrong. Men, they're useless, aren't they? Unless you point them. I want that. <laughs> See, what we did, because of the autism thing, we had Amazon wish lists. And now it's really annoying because you, before you could add anything from anywhere on your Amazon wish list. You can't do that anymore. It's only stuff on Amazon. But it was great because I could just put a wish list together and then my husband could come along at birthdays and whatever and go down the list and think, oh, I'll buy her that and know that he wasn't going to get it wrong because that's his major thing. And they can't choose. It's like we talk about the first time we let our son go to the shop. It's, um, I don't know, it's about a five minute, is it a five minute walk, three minute walk, whatever, down the road. And it's like, do you see him yet? No. Is there any sign of him now? No. How long's he been? Do you think we should go and look for him? Anyway, eventually came back. And I said to him the other day, because um, Madam was going on about doing something, and, and Travis is like, no, I'm going with her. Anyway, so I said to him, it's like when we let you go to the shop. And he went, yeah, but I couldn't choose. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing he was stood there with all this selection of stuff going oh i don't know and we're at the house going for fuck's sake is he been abducted where is it but it's funny anyway back to lisa hey i have known a lot of people and i would say this about the people on succession they may be wealthy they may look classy they may be the epitome of quiet luxury but they will let you know in more ways than one that they are not classy on the inside and they are not carrying them. Ooh, they're not classy on the inside. A bit like you having a go at the lady on the elevator that we're still waiting for you to address. Do you think that was classy? themselves in the same way on the inside as they do on the outside. To me, it all has to go together. I would much rather be around someone who is classy and who acts quiet luxury and dresses a little bit more trendy than some who look luxurious and will certainly tell you in more ways than one how much money they have because that is more of the situation that I know. See, that's the point, isn't it? You're jealous. You're going back to the time you took Brooke to a birthday party and you felt inadequate because they had more than you and you assumed that they were doing it to annoy you. Just like I'm not watching the videos in case I get upset. It's a you problem, 
Not anyone else, it's you. Notice. They'll tell you, I don't like labels, I don't like labels. Right there to me, that is telling me your intentions, that you are doing that to portray something. I just feel... Why are they doing that to portray something? I don't like labels. What am I portraying? That I don't like labels. like the true, true person who wants quiet luxury and doesn't want to call attention to themselves or their wealth will not even say that. I don't know, maybe they would say they don't like a big gold buckle or something like that. But of course, like I said, this is just a discussion. This is just my thoughts, random. I kind of just wanted to open it up and see what you thought because I- You don't want to know what we think. That's the problem. I'll put a link. Well, I can't, can I? You've blocked me. Somebody put a link to this video on her video and say, this is a comment. This is what we think. This is what Jules thinks. She'd like an answer and see if she's got the fucking backbone to watch this video and talk to me. Bet you tell her she doesn't. I don't want you to feel like I did, whereas when I saw those videos come up, I felt like they're going to insult me. And I don't want to hear that, for one thing, and I don't want to get my feelings hurt, and I don't want to feel less than, and I don't want you to feel that way either. No, grown up, normal people can watch that video and not feel that way. It's a you problem. I don't want them to make me feel less than. That's your entire life story, isn't it? That's why this isn't your forever home. You're still hankering after the house on the water and you won't be done until you get it. The Tesla car's fine, but the house is too small and it's not near enough to the water. You want the big house on the water so that everyone can see. Oh, Lisa Duncan, she done good. I think that it's just a style. It's just a style. And in honesty, my first instinct was if you are dressing to look rich or if you are dressing to look like you have money, then what's the difference in dressing with labels and dressing other ways to look like you have money? They're not dressing to look like they have money. That's the difference. They are buying good quality clothes because they can afford to and they're not advertising Fendi, Gucci, Chanel and every fucker else. I think it's just simply a different approach and different taste. It's just a different style. It's just a different vibe. And I think really you could probably go through ebbs and flows of this even in your style journey, depending on where you live, depending on what you do for a living, depending on your friends, who you're around. The fact that you may be attracted to rhinestones like I am, like my new little rhinestone, pink flats, to me, I don't care that that's not quiet luxury. To be honest with you, I don't know that anyone that notices those shoes where I live, I don't know if they would notice them or think any more of them than they would if I had a pair of pink, sparkly Steve Madden shoes on. I re so buy the spink, spink? <laughs> buy the pink, sparkly fucking Steve and Madden shoes then. You are buying those ones for a point. You could go out and buy pink sparkly shoes anywhere. But you had to have the ones with the label on. So that you didn't feel less than. I remember when I had those coach spotlight bags, which I sold and I still regret to this day because they were such phenomenal bags. And I remember every where I went getting compliments on those bags. Yes, they were over the top, but they were just phenomenal. I love a sequin bag. You guys know I love sequins anyway, and I always have, I always have. So why would I alter the things that I like just for that reason? Of course. No, but see, that's the thing. You could still buy a sequin bag. It doesn't have to have a label on it. That's the bit you don't understand. 
course I wouldn't. And I'm not really interested in looking rich. And I was thinking about that this morning where it goes back to how you were raised. I'm not interested in looking rich. Is that why you did the whole video on what to wear to look rich? where you were raised. I was raised middle class and I never felt poor, but I always loved nice things. We had nice things, but my parents did what it took to get nice things. Money was never a taboo thing in my house. It was never a negative because I was brought up with all self-employed entrepreneurial people. So money was a good thing. It meant progress, it meant success. So I don't have any hangups about money. I don't have any negative feelings. I've always loved nice things. And if I saw something that I wanted that was nice, I didn't look down at the person that was carrying it. I just thought, what do I have to do to be able to get that? What Nobody's looking down. See? The whole world's against Lisa, aren't they? What do I have to achieve? What can I do to become better and better and get whatever I want? I don't have any hang-ups, but I do know that a lot of people that if they were raised really poor, they might, you know, be more or less driven to different styles and different attitudes about money. I just think this subject in general, you know, goes so many different directions and it goes with everything, every product. Some people are not worried about the house that they live in. Some people are not worried about the car they drive. And I have known many, many people, many people that are very wealthy that drive an old beat up car. So it's just, it's one of those things you just can't make a judgment or a decision on someone's wealth, on someone's character, any of that by how they are dressed. Weren't you the one who said the other day, show me their sunglasses, I can tell you what car they drive? That is my opinion. So never feel like you have to be one thing or the other or that you have to feel less than because you are seeing all of these how to dress classy. And I've told you guys so many times, I'm not concerned with how to dress classy. I know how to dress classy if that's how I'm feeling that day or if that's what I'm into at that moment, just like I'm not trying to dress rich. I wear what I want to wear and I like the styles that I want. I would rather feel like I'm a good person. I would rather someone tell me I behave classy. I would rather be kind. Those are the things that I think about even throughout my life here. But it's an act, isn't it? It's all an act. You go out of the house and you're nice as pie to all the people in the shops and anyone you come across. And then when you come home, you pull them apart bit by bit. They had chipped toenail polish. Their sh you knew when they took their shoes off that their toe imprint would be on it. Blah, 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 blah. But you, you'd like to be kind, would you? Okay, whatever. Here in town, you know, as I have matured, even as you guys have seen me here on YouTube, there were things like places to go get your hair done that maybe I couldn't afford and then I would go to. And wow. They didn't even do that good of a job. The people there did not carry themselves well. It was not what I thought. Now, I just go to restaurants and to places that I want to go and- I When do you go to restaurants now? Miss, I only eat half a ribeye and a shrimp. Unless you're calling McDonald's drive through a restaurant. I'm not as fascinated and I don't feel like I'm being left out if I don't shop at certain places, if I don't go to certain places to get my nails done or certain places to get my hair done. I've kind of been there, I've done that, and it wasn't as classy and as luxe and as rich in every way as I thought it was gonna be. Another final thought, and I have learned this in every way. Matter of fact, when I kind of got into capsule wardrobes, I tried a lot of those things that the girls were suggesting, like Everlane. I mean, even Aritzia can be kind of a quiet luxury vibe. And there are things from those places. Do you even know what quiet luxury is? I think that's where you should start actually understand what it is that you're actually talking about 
before you try talking to others about it. It's not a certain style. Is that I like even cause I think would be somewhat of a quiet luxury I just ordered two things from there this morning but I will say from my own personal experience that if you are kind of not forcing but you are dressing in a way that is not in alignment with your true taste your true loves your true interest your true character and personality it is not very satisfying it's not I think it is much more important you are the only one that says getting dressed is satisfying. There's a whole heap of people that wear clothes just to cover themselves up and keep warm. A jumper's a jumper, trousers are trousers. Important for you to dress in the things that make you feel good. Like I always say, the most like you. The way you are dressed is, I always say it's kind of like a thumbnail of a video or the thumbnail of a video when you're trying to pick out something on Netflix. You know how you'll just go through the different thumbnails? I've even heard that they change thumbnails of series and movies according to, is it a man? that's searching or is it a woman? I think that's very cool, <laughs> very interesting. You and your appearance, that is part of your communication. It's visual communication. You are telling that person within seconds a little bit about yourself, just like- I like labels is what people will get from you. Like a thumbnail does on YouTube. You have to tell what that video is about. Now, if you click on a thumbnail and you get either catfished or you know duped into watching a video and the video is nothing like what the thumbnail looks this happens to me all the time i'll click on this really interesting thumbnail and then it's like a different person and it's not as glamorous or as appealing as the thumbnail you glamorous so you're throwing these words out there and not realizing what you're doing you're only looking for glamorous thumbnails looking down your nose at the rest of humanity, like the lady in the elevator. You click right off, and that's how you do as people. If you see someone and you think that they're something, you think that they're nice and classy or that you have something in common with, it doesn't take long sometimes to just click right off and realize, no, I really don't want to be around this person. It can be as quick to me as immediate gossiping, immediate, and you guys, it's not that I never say a cuss word, because I do. Sometimes you know what I mean, like immediate offensive type speaking, even if they're dressed in the most quiet luxury thing or something that I really, really like, if they turn me off immediately, I'm going to click off. The more you can dress and present yourself as the person that you are, even if it changes. You guys have seen my style go from here to there. You've seen my makeup go from here. It's not your style though, is it? It's somebody else's. Your style is sweatpants, t-shirt, flip-flops. That's what you'd wear every day, all day, if you got away with it. But you're trying to present yourself as something you're not. To there, my hair go from platinum blonde to dark but i'm always the same person because it's all that <laughs> my hair from platinum blonde to dark for all of 35 seconds because you realized you look you didn't like it or john said something and that was the end of that but i know i've never been one to really want to act like anyone else i know that i make <laughs> Did she just say, I'm, I've never wanted to act like anyone else? <sighs> Single white female, that's all I'm saying. You see somebody and you stalk them. You stalked a woman in your own town. You admitted to it. You see somebody in an outfit, you have to have the exact same top, bottom, eyeshadow, fucking eyeliner. You don't even know who you are. You have no clue who you are. Make mistakes. I know that I say things wrong. I may not have the most eloquent vocabulary, 
but it would be miserable if I were sitting here trying to act like someone that I'm not. And but that's what you do all the time. That doesn't mean that I don't change, that I don't grow, that I don't become interested in things and not alter, what is the word, transition into different things, even different interests. It doesn't mean that you stay stagnant or that your style can't change. It just needs to be true to who you are. So if I had one wish for everyone, that's what it would be. And I love that about people. I love that my mom has, it's not even totally different. I think we, we meet a little bit like a Venn diagram. We meet in the middle a little bit on our style, but I would never in a million years want her to dress in something or do her makeup makeup against who she really is. My daughter, Brooke, who's 23, she doesn't really have my style. Again, we may cross. Why would your 23 year old daughter have your style? She's 20 fucking three. If anything, you're trying to copy her more than she's copying you. Crossover in a few little things like cargo pants or something like that. Even if I take her out of town, she doesn't want to go in Gucci. That's just not her style. Whereas I'm not. Oh, right. So she doesn't like labels. What's that saying? Does that upset you? really crazy about urban outfitters. I'm sure I could find something in there and it doesn't mean that I don't love her style. I call her my little gypsy. She loves the more flowy things. I love it. We could go on and on talking about this and maybe we'll get to do that one day. Maybe we'll get to have live videos and talk about all these things, but style is so much fun. It's so... Who's going to tune in if Lisa does a live? a great resource for everything creativity communication with other people i think it bonds other people like i know that when i see a woman in ulta or in somewhere and she's in an elevator dressed a lot like i am there's an immediate connection there not that there isn't immediate connection to me with all women but there's more maybe with women my age i you know i'm fascinated with children and young mothers things like that so i hope you enjoyed this little discussion i hope that you got something out of it my accessories today i would say a great quiet luxury brand would be dean davidson his stuff is luxurious i love it whereas you know Sheila's is going to be more beachy. Uh, Jenny's is going to be more edgy. And then we've talked about my wedding ring, my bull of a watch. The reason I got this is because I loved that it was kind of retro and it just gave me that big Vegas retro 70s feeling. I have a Rolex but I don't always wear it because it depends on the look that I'm going for that day. So thank you for being here and let me talk this out with you. Oh, I welcome. love it. I love every aspect of being a woman. I could talk about it all day long and you know I can. So thank you for being here and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Hey, Pusscat. I don't know which one that is. Is it Bubba or Sassy? I can never tell them apart. I'm sorry, that was just 25 minutes of absolute bollocks. She's got no clue what she's talking about at all. Anywho, if you got this far with me, thank you very much and I'll catch you in the next one.